Good afternoon everyone, it's uh, Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon in London. Don't look at the dishes in the background, that's the washing up. You know, making videos for YouTube is, you know, it looks easy and it's reasonably easy to shoot a video. Uh, it depends on how much uh, color correction you want to do, it depends on your sound, it depends on if you're shooting outside or inside. Obviously inside sometimes is a lot easier because you don't have background noise. But you still have to have a setup which, you know, you get good sound uh, that, that is reasonable enough quality that when it's on YouTube, you know, you guys don't complain about it or you know it's not so annoying that you watch a video and you can't hear the person speaking or the footage is blown out like in the corner here it's blowing out uh, so you want a good vlogging camera or a YouTube camera um, and you know in saying this it's not just a vlogging camera it's a camera you can shoot your Porsche with it's a camera you can shoot lots of things with uh, you can't rely purely on your smartphone camera or video as good as uh, and I'll only talk about iPhone here because that's all I own as good as the iPhone is it's still not the best quality. Uh, stabilization is not always great. Sound is not great. I always have problems with white balance. Uh, you can use Filmic Pro, and I do use Filmic Pro sometimes, but it takes a little bit longer, and some people uh, struggle with the interface. But anyway, this gets me onto another point. At the moment, I'm filming with the, I'm filming, I should say, with the Canon G7X Mark II. Now, the Canon G7X Mark II is my go-to vlogging camera. I'm not the only one that uses it. It is probably the most popular uh, camera on YouTube for vloggers. It's the most popular uh, camera to use because one, you get reasonably good color. You get Canon color, which is quite a good color uh, profile. You get reasonably good sound. The microphone's quite responsive. Um, you get custom settings. Uh, I have it set up as a custom setting. I don't just film it on plain movie mode. I actually set it up in a custom way to suit my preferences. Um, you know, so you get a reasonably good setup. You put a little tripod on it, you put it on a large tripod, it's easy to walk around with, the stabilization is quite good. All in all, it's a pretty good camera. And the success of the Canon G7X and G7X Mark II, which is what I'm shooting on, uh, it shows that. It shows that. And I'm sure they'll bring out a new model soon. So today, uh, speaking about Sony. Now, Sony is probably my... Sony probably is my, my favorite camera at the moment. I have a Sony a7S, which I don't use hardly at all. I have about four lenses for it. I have microphone, I have tripods, I have monopods. I have the whole, the whole setup. And uh, I probably should use it, but it doesn't have a flip-up screen. I haven't bothered to buy a monitor. I know you can get apps uh, that you can actually, like field monitor app that you can actually uh, see what you're shooting. Or you can use this, the Sony app, but the Sony app doesn't always work so well. Works okay for photos, doesn't work so good for videos. Um, but I don't tend to use my Sony uh, A7S that much, but I like Sony Color. So I'm gonna show you again in a second because I'm about to shoot this camera and show you, but that's gonna be on the Sony RX100 Mark V. Now, Sony has just launched, just introduced, which is available I think in July this year, uh, a Sony RX 100 Mark VI. Now I had the original RX100 and it was a great camera and that's when primarily I was just shooting stills. Uh, now I do video, uh, my priorities and, and the things I need out of a camera has changed. Now as much as I love the Sony and I tend to use uh, the Sony RX100 we have as Natasha's, I do tend to use it. It doesn't have the one thing that I need and that one thing is a touchscreen display. It doesn't have, I mean, they do the flip up now, Sony. They didn't originally. They do the flip up monitor. That's great. They have a great color EVF, electronic viewfinder. That's great. But the one thing is this, where I can touch the screen and I can adjust the focus when I go out of focus and I can see myself and I can use the touch interface. And it's really, really important. And Sony has just brought that out. So maybe Sony is now the best vlogging camera. Okay, so this is the Canon G7X. The Canon G7X is a great camera. If you haven't seen this thing on top before, it's got a micro muff. It stops the wind. It's literally just on Velcro. Uh, I did a video about it quite a while back. Uh, you can watch that video somewhere here. 
Um, but this is a, this is the Canon G7X Mark II. I have it always on C settings, which is custom settings. Uh, C settings. Um, the best thing about the uh, G7X is when you're shooting, you can adjust the focus point. Uh, you know, you can adjust the aperture by just turning the, the control dial on the lens. You know, it works very, very easy. It's a very, very easy camera to use. So this is my go-to camera. Of course, I do use the iPhone. And the iPhone camera, I have a 7 Plus. Like I said, it's okay. It's not great. It's great for what it is. I shouldn't say it's not great. It's great for what it is. The problem with this camera, the problem with this camera, the Canon G7X Mark II, is that when you are recording, it has this focus hunt function. And the focus hunt function, you'll hear it in some of my videos and you'll hear it in lots of people on YouTube's videos when there's not a lot of uh, background noise, is it clicks. It keeps clicking and clicking and clicking uh, where it's hunting for the focus. Well, it's not really hunting focus, it's, do, it's their autofocus mechanism. I don't know the, the, the techniques of it, the technical side of it, and you guys are probably, there's probably some of you out there listening to me going, what is he talking about? Um, but, you know, it, it does the clicking sound, it's a little bit annoying. Sony's introduced the uh, RX, Mark, uh, RX 100 Mark VI. Now, I'm not going to talk about this for uh, image, images so much, just about video. Uh, let me go over to my computer, I have my notes, and let's go through it now. The one thing about this apartment in London is during this time of the day, the sun is very, very bright. So I hope this is not too overexposed. I uh, apologize as it is, but I seem to have it at the right setting. Yeah, so the Sony's brought, the Sony, uh, you know, the Sony form factor has pretty much not changed. Uh, this is the RX100 Mark, uh, Mark IV. Sorry, not Mark V, it's Mark IV. This is the one that we have. Um, the form factor has pretty much stayed the same for the RX100 Mark VI, uh, which I don't think really changed that much from the RX100 Mark V. Um, the difference between this one and the new one is the new one has a much longer zoom lens. Uh, with the zoom lens, it has better optical stabilization. I mean, if you want to shoot videos, the new Sony actually has 4K HDR, which is, a, which is new from the previous model. And, you know, super slow motion. But the selling point, like I said before, to me, is the touchscreen. The screen has, I think, a lot more movement than the previous model. Uh, so it's perfect for selfies or filming yourself on YouTube, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, the aperture of the video of the camera, though, the RX100 Mark VI is 2.8 to... Uh, what is it? 2.8 to 4.5. So 4.5 is a little bit slower, 2.8 to 4.5, of the previous model. So you may struggle a little bit in low light, uh, but it is actually slower than the uh, shorter uh, zoom on the other one, which was 20 to 70, I think. 24 to 70 was the previous lens. Anyway, this is not really a review. I'm not really reviewing the camera. I just noticed that it had been launched a couple of days ago. Uh, it's still quite a, there's a, there's a few butts with this camera and there are a few main butts that you have to take into consideration. I think the main butt is the price. It's expensive. It's about 1200 US dollars. It's about 1100 pounds estimated price when it goes on sale in July. So it's not a cheap camera. Uh, this camera, I mean, I'm, this was in Australian dollars. I think this camera, the Canon G7X Mark II in Australia was about $700. Um, so that was quite a cheap, you know, quite a good price for this type of camera. The Sony has always been more expensive. So the reason why this is not, why this may not be a perfect vlogging camera, and you know what, this is not just about the Sony. This is really about any type of point and shoot. You know, I'm not picking on the Sony RX100. Like I said, this is the Mark IV, but the problem with these cameras is always pretty much the same thing. Uh, the Canon, I have to say, battery life-wise is very good. Sony, as a record, and my A7S is terrible, I have about four spares. Uh, the battery life usually on Sony is not great. Uh, this RX100 is okay. The charging system of it is really annoying where you have to plug it into like into the camera and into another thing. I don't have the separate battery charger, so it's a little bit annoying. Uh, the Canon's a lot easier to charge. Uh, the other big but is it doesn't have a jack for a microphone. And the Canon doesn't either, so you can't add an external microphone. So it's not really a perfect vlogging camera. Uh, so you really have to trust the internal mic and make sure the internal mic has a good enough pickup for you and a good enough sound. Uh, I think the Canon is quite good. Uh, I don't think this uh, Sony RX100 Mark IV, I don't think the microphone is as good as the Canon G7X. I think the sound of the G7X is good. Like I said before, it's just that clicking sound when it's trying to find, when it's auto-focusing. 
Um, I know some of you told me you can turn it off, but in these custom settings, I can't seem to turn it off properly. Um, I don't know why. Uh, if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments. The other problem with these uh, sort of point and shoot cameras is the fact that with the Sony RX100 Mark V, maybe it's not the perfect vlogging camera because the lens just isn't wide enough. Uh, it's good for video to have a wide lens. Um, you know, so the wider the lens is normally better to get the full view of the surroundings that you're filming. Uh, you usually want to see what's going on around you, um, put you in situ, and it, it's good to have a wide lens with a vlogging camera, uh, which is why a lot of people use uh, cameras with uh, exchangeable lenses, interchangeable lenses, I should say, so like the Sony A7S, like the uh, Sony 6300, the Canon 80D, those sort of cameras. The other but is the zoom. You know, the zoom is great. I don't tend to use zoom that much. I definitely don't use digital zoom. Digital zoom is where, it, uh, you know, you lose, the pitch quality gets really bad. Uh, optical zoom is okay. Um, I don't tend to use zoom too much when I'm using, uh, when I'm vlogging, uh, making videos for YouTube, but the thing with the longer zoom, it's a plus, I guess, if you're taking photos. It could be a plus for videos. I don't tend to use it that much. It's not a big plus for me. I would rather have the better low light capability. Uh, like I said, it loses a bit of that with the zoom lens. Um, the stabilization has improved, but whether or not it's a lot different between the RX100 Mark IV, the RX100 Mark V, I'm not sure because I haven't played with the camera but it could be just because it has to have better stabilization because of the longer lens. The Sony does give you super slow motion, which is really good. I mean, the Sony has also, in the RX100 Mark VI, has got the uh, faster processor. It's the same processor, I think, that's in the Sony A9, so it's a much faster processor. If you're taking images, it's very fast. If you're taking video, I think, you know, the processor keeps up. I don't think you'll struggle with it. I don't know if you were just filming 4K how long, I'm not sure of the overheating times or the limit to the 4K recording. I know the previous models had a slight limit to the 4K recording time. Uh, I'm guessing these would too, just due to the heating factor when you're shooting 4K. I mean, just a quick video today, but I just thought, you know, like, I like the Canon G7X, I prefer the Sony color, I like the, the Canon uh, screen, the touch screen. Uh, I like the fact that you can touch it. I like the fact that you can move the focus. I like the fact that you can do the settings. The Sony's really annoying how you can only use the center dial and the back of the camera. I'll show you. The center dial at the back of the camera for your functions. This is not a touch screen. This is not a touch screen. Um, but, you know, it. This is still a good camera. This is still a really good camera and I use it as a second camera instead of pulling out my Sony a7S. If I need to do a two camera shot, I always use this. Uh, it doesn't always match the Canon color and the videos that I've shot this with the Canon, you'll notice that. In fact, you'll notice it in this video because I just shot the Canon G7X Mark II with this camera. I don't color correct it. You'll see the difference. There is a difference in the, in, in the cinematic quality of the footage. Uh, that's just a, a characteristic of, of Canon and Sony. Sony is always a little bit more cinematic in my eyes. Oh, the other thing which is really cool is I've introduced a new grip. So this is a grip. I think you've got control functions on the grip. You can, it turns into a tripod. Uh, it's an optional accessory. I think that's a good thing. I mean, obviously they're pushing this camera to vloggers. They want, they want you to ditch this Canon G7X. They want you to buy the new Sony RX100 Mark VI and they want you to start vlogging about it and talking about it. Anyway, just a quick chat today. Uh, thoughts about vlogging cameras, thoughts about a camera if you want to film your uh, Porsche 911, or film anything in your life really. Uh, like I said, if you want a great go-to camera, the Canon G7X Mark II is fantastic. Sony color is a bit better. Canon sound for me on the G7X Mark II is slightly better. Um, Settings wise, Sony interface is really annoying. Canon interface is a little bit better. I think the new Mark VI has got a different interface, so hopefully that's more uh, intuitive. Um, but all in all, they're both great cameras. They both do pretty much the same thing, but for ease of use, at the moment it's the Canon. I wanna buy the Sony RX100 Mark VI. I'm gonna go and try and test it out when it's in the shop and have a look at it. Uh, if it's good enough, I am gonna buy it and I'm gonna use it as my second camera. Uh, and then I can give Natasha her camera back. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching today. It's Friday here in London, as I said earlier. Uh, it's a beautiful day, and uh, thanks for all the support. My name is Michael Bath. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.